All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 43, Applications for Ammonia from the Red Pyramid. So in today's episode, I will be explaining how the ancient civilization that constructed the Egyptian pyramids was utilizing the ammonia solution that was once being produced inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur. I will also begin to reveal how the function of the Egyptian pyramids is directly connected to our modern industrial revolution in the early 1900s. So if you're new to the channel and you're not familiar with my theory on the function of the Red Pyramid of Dashur, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and check out episode 30, The Function of the Red Pyramid Part 3, which contains an exceptional animation demonstrating exactly how that structure operated. Thank you so much to Wally for helping me coordinate the production of that animation, and I will put a link to that episode in the video description below. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, let me know what you think of the episode in the comment section below. Of course, all the likes and comments help to push this material out into the algorithm, so I really appreciate everyone's support. If you want to pick up a copy of the book, check out thelandofchem.com. I have limited first edition print copies of the book, and brand new Land of Chem merch is available in the merch. To anyone that's purchased a copy of the book, you know who you are, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your support. Everyone, I think that is it for today's intro, so without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So recall from our previous discussions that the knowledge of ammonia, the production of ammonia, and the name of this chemical have their origins in ancient Egypt, even according to conventional history. So the original name for ammonia was sal ammoniac, which literally translates into the salt of Ammon. Ammon, of course, being an Egyptian quote-unquote deity. And the archaeological record shows that they were indeed producing this chemical. So we have not only the etymology of the word ammonia and the knowledge of this chemical tracing back to ancient Egypt. And the applications for this chemical would have been very much the same back then as they are today in our modern world. So in the previous episode, I explained that one application for the methane being produced inside of the steppe pyramid was syngas or synthesis gas for the production of other industrial chemicals like methanol, formaldehyde, and most importantly, ammonia. And of course, I have gone into great depth here on the channel, both discussing exactly how the Red Pyramid was producing ammonia and finally putting to rest the fallacious argument that the overwhelming smell of ammonia and the black staining in the upper vaults of these chambers was produced by bats. For more on that, check out episode 36, the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it absolutely reeks of ammonia inside the final synthesis chamber of the red pyramid still to this day. And a chemical analysis of that black material was performed, which holds conclusive evidence for my theory that high temperature, high pressure chemical reactions were occurring inside of these chambers. And those reactions resulted in the production of an aqueous ammonia solution, or chemically speaking, ammonium hydroxide, which you can see here. So this is not particularly spectacular to look at. It is just a clear liquid with an extremely pungent smell that I think everyone is familiar with. But believe it or not, this is one of the most valuable chemicals on the planet and possibly one of the most important chemicals ever synthesized. Also, the Red Pyramid was not producing liquid ammonia, which is gaseous ammonia supercooled to a liquid state. The Red Pyramid was producing gaseous ammonia dissolved into water, an ammonia solution. This is a critical difference that I just felt the need to clarify. So now, what can you do with this ammonia solution? Well, the first application is also as a synthesis gas for the production of other chemicals, the most significant being ammonium bicarbonate or urea, which are going to be discussing in the next episode, but also for chemicals like nitric acid. So I have explained in detail how the Great and Central Pyramids of Giza were producing sulfuric and hydrochloric acids respectively. However, to create the mysterious and powerful aqua regia, an acidic solution that can dissolve gold, we also need nitric acid. So now let's take a look at the configuration of the Ostwald process. 
an industrial chemical manufacturing operation that produces nitric acid from ammonia gas. So first we have a catalytic chamber that converts the ammonia into nitrogen oxide. Now I have already alluded to one structure here on the channel that contains a catalytic chamber. However, I didn't specifically call it a catalyst chamber and I have not yet explained how it operated. So let's see in the comment section below who has been paying close attention. Next up, you have an oxidation chamber that converts nitrogen oxide into nitrogen dioxide and then an absorption chamber where that nitrogen dioxide gas is absorbed into water to create an aqueous solution of nitric acid. Now, does this sound like anything familiar that we've been discussing here on the channel? It definitely should. And we will be getting to that in a later video. So please subscribe and stay tuned. So next up, the second application for the ammonia solution is in the industries of the ancient pre-dynastic Egyptians, specifically textiles, dyes and pigments, and cosmetics. So first, cosmetics. The ancient Egyptians are historically known to be the first civilization to manufacture cosmetics, and ammonia has many applications in that industry in the production of pigments. And a quick side note. One of the cosmetics utilized by the ancient Egyptians was a substance known as coal, a black powder which was utilized as an eyeliner. And this black powder was made from nothing less than antimony sulfides or antimony oxides. So do I have your attention once again? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, antimony also being present in the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining. So this ancient civilization not only knew about, but was also working with antimony, at least on a semi-industrial basis. And this is how I envision the factories of these ancient civilizations, taking the chemicals that were being produced inside of the pyramids and working with them in a variety of applications to create the products, textiles and clothing, tanning leather hides, making glass, jewelry, etc., that were utilized by this ancient civilization. So here we see an example of a pre-industrial revolution textile factory. And ammonia would have been used as a dye fixative and a finishing agent to help pigments adhere to these garments. Or Egyptian blue, for example, another pigment that would have had to been produced at least on a somewhat industrial scale because we see this color and this paint all over Egypt. They couldn't just make one small batch and call it a day. It had to be produced regularly on a large scale to supply the needs of the entire civilization. And this was the same with all of the other goods that were being created. So this is how I envision the chemical labs or quote unquote temples and factories that were adjacent to and worked in conjunction with the chemical manufacturing operations of the Egyptian pyramids. This is not lost ancient high technology. This is practical ancient chemistry that I am proposing was being implemented on an industrial scale within the Egyptian pyramids. And just a quick reminder, that brand new Land of Chem merch is finally available at thelandofchem.com. I am currently wearing the new G exclusive. The pink t-shirt with the brand new violet fifth degree logo, a raw image for the central pyramid of Giza featuring the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid. I designed this because I could have it in my personal collection, but I also put it up on the website if you want to grab one too. And don't forget, limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book. The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, also now available at thelandofchem.com. I'll put a link in the video description below. If you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a copy of the book, pick up a t-shirt. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. So thank you all so much for your support. And last, but certainly not least, the third application for the ammonia solution from the Red Pyramid is for making fertilizer. So 80 to 90% of the ammonia being manufactured today is used for the production of fertilizers. And the exact same thing would have been true of this ancient civilization. Now, one argument that has been made against my proposition that the Red Pyramid was producing ammonia for fertilizer is that the ancient Egyptians wouldn't have needed fertilizer because of the nutrient-rich soil surrounding the Nile River, which was perfect to grow crops. Well, that is great. But that entire area was underwater for most of the year, and they were only able to harvest crops for a few months. Egypt is located in a climate that can sustain crop production year round. So why not implement fertilizers to facilitate that process? Of course they would have. 
Not to mention, I have proposed that the Egyptian pyramids were constructed and operated during the time period from circa 8500 BCE to around 5000 BCE, when the upper eastern Saharan region had plentiful rainfall and was mostly farmland designated for the domestication of cattle, of course directly connected to the operation of the steppe pyramid, and the ammonia from the Red Pyramid was utilized to make fertilizer for this entire area, and it is certainly possible that this chemical assisted, along with the additional rainfall during this period, in terraforming an otherwise unusable desert into arable crop-producing farmland. And then, circa 5000 BCE, the rains stop, the pyramids become inoperational, and the Sahara Desert reclaims this entire area. And then we see the re-centralization of the civilization back around the Nile River and the beginning of the dynastic Egyptian period. And last but not least, old Fritz Haber, the Haber process and the modern industrial revolution. So I have alluded to this before in several episodes and plan on doing a full in-depth episode, which also includes the Oswald process, which I mentioned previously. But for now, I will say this, Fritz Haber was actively visiting Egypt and I have a suspicion that he may have taken the exact same journey inside the Red Pyramid that I did for my first time back in 2017. He saw the black staining in the upper vaults, smelled the pungent, unmistakable smell of ammonia emanating from the final synthesis chamber, and after returning home, he attempted to reverse engineer this structure and created the first apparatus for the industrial scale synthesis of ammonia, which you can see here. So guess where the money to engineer and build this apparatus came from? Turns out the project was bankrolled by an Egyptian financier, another quote unquote coincidence as the mystery of ammonia begins to unravel. Now, any of you that have been following my work or are familiar with the configuration of these structures will immediately know that this is this, the Red Pyramid. And instead of writing a book and sharing it with the world, Fritz Haber got a patent for his process, and the quote-unquote discovery led into our modern ability to produce agriculture on an industrial scale through the use of ammonia-based fertilizers. So even today, ammonia fertilizer is absolutely critical for sustaining our modern civilization. And this is what I am proposing was the primary application for the fertilizer from the Red Pyramid. So I am proposing that our modern industrial revolution and large scale chemical manufacturing operations like the Haber process that we've been discussing today, the Ostwald process that I mentioned previously in this episode, and the contact process that I alluded to in previous episodes, all of these were derived from knowledge that was gained from reverse engineering the Egyptian pyramids. More on that in a full in-depth episode coming up soon, so subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and stay tuned. And that is it for today's video. This was episode 43, Applications for the Ammonia from the Red Pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. In the next episode of the series, I will be explaining how the ammonium bicarbonate that was once being produced inside the Bent Pyramid of Dashur was being utilized by this ancient civilization. If you liked the video, please leave it a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever the videos premiere. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave that in the comment section below. TheLandofChem.com if you want to help support the channel, pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time.